Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the Losses of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. West Russian Republic Lover, or Mr. Ragey Lover, but right now, we need to talk about the people's mandates. Or really, basically, at the time of this, I've played off quite a bit off-screen, and we have elections right now, and I want to keep Vaznesinski here in power as much as possible, so... We've been doing a lot of elections. If you want to read about democracy in Russia, please go ahead. I'm pretty sure I've read this before, especially when doing Alexei Kosygin. And maybe even Svetlana Selina, so that's why I already did all these. If you want to read about this one, please go ahead. As well as the DSNP campaign, which maybe I didn't read before, but... Vosnesinski isn't perfect, but he's perfect for West Russia. The working man in Russia has no better choice than the founder of modern Russian democracy. The DSMP blends the best of old Soviet socialism with new democratic institutions to create a democratic socialist party that protects workers' lives and liberties. The DSMP will get a head start on the election campaign. Vosnesinski will crisscross the West Russian Republic, giving speeches promoting his presidential record and plans for the future, as many West Russians will be choosing him for the first time. This campaign will be crucial for, to securing their votes. Two are the industrial centers. West Russians, workers, countrymen, you have been liberated. Some of you have been liberated from noblemen, juntas, and collaborators who expect you to work for to make them richer. Some of you have been liberated from authoritarian communists who valued you only for your output as a line item in a centrally planned budget. But now you have a true friend in your government. Uh, our party fights for you and not for your servitude. We fight that you may earn a fair wage for fair work, that you may feel secure from job precarity, and that you may retire with a well-deserved pension. We are the DSMP and we are your party. Vosnesovsky. We'll go on a public speaking tour in factories across Western Ru the West Russian Republic. He will play to the party's industrial base and promote himself as a friend of the working class by shoring up support from a core constituency. Constituency. We should have a strong showing in elections and inter-region regional agenda. Since many of our voters are new to the party, it would be wise to teach him what we stand for. West Russia needs to know that what our ideology and policies are if we're able to win a mandate in the 1968 elections. The DSMP will publish a party platform across Western Russia and Republic. In it, they will detail their plans for wage, occupational safety, and pension reform. They'll also make it clear that their ultimate goals are to reunify the whole of Russia and apply the pro work agenda across all of its regions. Nobody with his heart with a heart could oppose this platform. And campaigning season is over, and the West Russian Republic is heading to the polls. Each candidate put up a good fight, and analysts see this election as anyone's game. Russians will soon gather around the radio sets to hear the final tallies and find out who will lead their nation for the next five years. Vosnesinski's Democratic Socialists, Stalina's stability minded centrists, or Kosygin's Liberal Democrats. Many will be elated by the results, others dismayed, yet one thing can all agree, agree upon is that a free and fair election was finally held across West Russia, a triumph in a land who has never known a peaceful transfer of power. No matter who wins the most votes, democracy is won in the West Russian Republic. The 1967 general election. Following months of debates, speeches, politics, and campaigning, the big days finally arrived. As volunteers across the nation began opening voting booths and counting stations, um, or counting ballots, candidates and voters stood around radios and street corners to await the results. Amidst the many elections for mayors, governors, and other elected bodies, the main focus rests on the general election and on who will lead Russia throughout the coming years. As well as are tallied and ballots counted, it's clear the winner of the election is. the Sovereign Democratic Party elected. The votes have been tallied and the campaign has ceased. Being the Republic's first presidential election since stabilizing its democracy, higher vote turnout and general optimism were reported amongst the populace. In the end, Svetlana Selina's Sovereign Democratic Party won the election, huh? And the newly elected president gave a passionate inaugural speech in front of the National Assembly? Well, I don't know about that. And the most nationalist of the Republic's three main parties, the PSD has always pushed for expansion of the military and police. Combined with the fanatic opposition to extremism has caused the critics to call them authoritarians, glorified despots. However, it's clear that the nationalist populist rhetoric has impressed voters, and may see the current state of Russia's re Russia requiring strong leadership and even stronger military in the end. All that matters is the Republic survive and none of the PSD shall thrive. Well, I don't know about that. Uh, actually, I was campaigning the entire time for the DSNP, and even though I'm going to give them funky results here... Yeah, PSD, how do they win? That makes no sense. But, we'll see what happens very, very soon. Well, would you look at that? The People's Democratic Socialist Party was actually elected instead of Svetlana Stalinas. Stalinas. In the end, Nikolai Vosnesinsky's People's Democratic Socialist Party won in the election and the newly elected president gave a passionate inaugural address in front of the National Assembly. The first of the Republic's main three parties to form the DSNP led the Republic through the terror bombings and now left to lead the Republican war. Nikolai Vosnesinsky and his party have often been criticized for collaborating with radical leftists, corruption, and his own history of racist comments. Ooh, sounds like fun. But it appears the party and its founders shook off the scandals and have been elected once more to the office of presidency. The DSNP has formally promised to continue the Republic's transition to socialism. However, most pundits agree or expect the DSMP to continue to implement social democratic policies. The first president of the Republic shall lead it to glory once more. Well, as Nessus has seen his Republic grow from a small warlord state to a powerful contender for unifying all of Russia in the end. All that matters to most is that the Republic survived and under the DSMP it shall thrive. Oh, you bet it will. Good job, Vosnesinski. Totally didn't use Khan's commands, but the Russian economy or socialist mandate? Mm, Russian Republican army. And then onto the world stage. Oh, boy. Well, I do... Ooh. United you know how to government, more political power is going to be extremely important 
Social democracy reduces admin strain. The All Russian Autonomy Commission. Hmm. Prioritize majoritarian, majoritarian concerns. Hmm. Socialist mandate. As much as I don't do the economy, oh, that'd be so nice to do. Oh, poverty would be rapidly improved. We might do balance between both of these, but socialist mandate first. As Russia roils and bleeds around us, we must cling to the principles which have brought us as far to the ideal of our constitution. Not for us, the tyranny of the Eurasianists, not for the violence of the communist left, and not for the falsehoods and demagoguery of radicalism. In this and only do this do we place our trust and dedication to democratic socialism, one which is beholden neither to the will of an iron hierarchy nor to the nightmarish callings of frenzied agitators. Yes, socialism. We dare use that term to divorce from the tyrant Bolsheviks of old, for unlike those who would pass red sardom to their walls to keep them safe, we're not afraid of listening to the people, and we're not afraid of acting on what we hear. Only socialism can keep us loyal to our people, and only democracy can keep socialism true to its core. There can be no other option. And the Russian economy. The current economy is in terribly bad shape. Much of what we once had was ravaged by German bombings 20 years ago, and the rest was destroyed by the Russian warlords before us. We have to start a very long recovery process if we are ever to establish Russia as a dominant socialist nation. <laughs> Thankfully, our economic advisors are already formulating a plan to get us back on track, which is great. Uh, we could invest in construction and turning these guys too. More manpower is always nice. Lose stability, though. Courage, political thought. Eh, it's okay. And I totally didn't use cons commands to make sure that we won the elections. Totally didn't. Yeah, this is totally fair and strong. Totally, totally. But we do have some comments to go through. Ooh, actually, now, unlike earlier, now the DSMP. We barely, I mean, we didn't barely win, but, like, the election results are a lot worse. Even after using cons commands. Like, what the heck, man? It's all kind of messed up here, but I've already switched these divisions over to just militia so we can save some money for now. Um, of course, like I said our last time, we are free market capitalists. Our debt to GDP ratio is not bad, and hopefully we'll go up to fair credit rating eventually. And we have a yearly surplus, which is actually really, really nice. Very, very nice. Fresh off the process. We're still trying to build some army bases up here. Um, we want more military factories, of course. Oh my gosh, we need so many more military factories. we got plenty of arty. Not really. But we do have quite a bit, so I'm going to cut this down just a little bit. We'll go ahead and cut it down to three here-ish. Uh, I'll go down to four because we'll need to share the love a little bit. Oh my goodness, how we do. Boss Nessus Ski speech, though. Everyone read about the end of election season, please go ahead. No one at the DSMP headquarters knew when the miners' protest letter made it to Boss Nessinski's desk or office. Truth be told, that was probably the only reason why it got so far out of his door. In the first place, the DSMP has gone past its worst day, but a residue of suspicion seemed to obtain everything past the office these days. Even so, once the letter made it to his desk, there was little to do but apologize. It was an intrusion, after all. No doubt the president would simply laugh it off or spend another afternoon on the phone fulminating at Zidanov or whoever caught the man's eye that day. Or these days. The staffers, unfortunate enough to chance upon Vazdesensky later in the afternoon, caught him in his worst passionate fire with a trace of the old vigor. Dangerous in the way that a lit match that a lit match threatens a ham. Vazdesensky sees a staffer by the arms, calling at once a staff meeting to address the minor deplorable safety conditions and their degraded working hours. The meeting lasted five hours, and a response plan five more. The rays of dawn heralded the end of the ladder. The president, however, was bound by no such petty rules as a need to sleep, but Donia Shafford a, a handy staff car, dragging his aides along to speak directly with the management of that little mine southwest of Sikhtiv car and whatever he told the company meant, and it worked. The headlines blared the president's name and a handy little picture of smiling Vosnesinski held aloft by exultant sweaty men for a week straight, declaring him a man of the people and a progressive icon. To the exhausted staffers planning a celebratory campaign, half dead from overwork and on unpaid over ten, it almost seemed worth the trouble. Almost. Getting that extra political power, the United Government is good. For all the talk of democracy, a certain degree of electoral unity is necessary to ensure a legislative branch is not vulnerable to the attacks that crippled our forebears. We must strive for a government that is both attuned to the popular voice and unfettered in the capability to carry out that which is mandated to us. It is such. We'll continue the broad-based United Coalition strategy. The extremist elements which we collaborated with, however, will no longer be welcome. And so we'll pull in diverse elements from all across society, creating a truly broad-based party capable of responding to popular demands. Unionist soldiers and street sweepers shall all have their voices heard in a coalition. And minor parties pressure into upholding their interests as well. This might fragment the power of our opposition, but democracy is not about opposition, is it not? After all, it's not, it is not competition, but representation. That is what makes Russia great. Why would we ever want to change that? So we can get our way, that's why. Ooh, a lot of lag, but that's alright. Um, let's see, a couple comments. Let's see, comments from the last video, which I was very ragey in. Um, someone asks, is it just me, or did No Step Back make TNO harder to play? No, it made TNO very hard to play. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, you should see the AI. Actually, it's a good thing we can, well, I wonder. These guys might be able to unify quickly. They might be able to. But, like, I've seen, like, Western Russia, and when I was playing, it was, like, was it Tomsk? They didn't unify until, like, 1970. It took them way longer to unify, which is kind of ridiculous, in all honesty. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure the devs are working on it. I'm not sure why Pol New Poland exists, but whatever. Status of the economy. 
Rodionov, glazed at the hulking shell of the factory, lost his ever in thought. He was not a particularly expressive man, but occasionally afforded his mind the luxury of imagination as a dog might be afforded a leash on a warm day. It wasn't like he didn't have the time, anyway. Bosnitsky had sent him here on this fact-finding mission to scout out something he could present the Republic with shiny... Uh, oh, oh boy. Uh, shiny fetters and trimmed ribbons on the sides. He shrugged. It was time to take his imagination for a walk. The name of the factory had been long lost, and what appeared to have been a bomb blast had shrouded most of the walls in the East Wing. Even so... There's plenty of evidence remaining to suggest that this place had once been a hive of activity. Here and there, the familiar white scrabble, concrete, and steel loomed in the building's innards, surrounded by brilliant red, rust red rings of dust. Uh, streaks of rust and scraped off concrete, scraped off concrete, indicated the presence of what must have been lights, equipment, presses, and hydraulic wings, or wires. How long it had been since the walls had hummed with activity, as they no doubt once had? When the lights had gone out, and how many wild, willed away their youth, playing soldier amidst the ruins, Rodionov thought through the interviews he had held with the townsfolk in the little village to the left, so few of them left, and so many empty houses. Gone with the money, it's lack, and the hope reached, leached from their faces like a blatant sodden too long in the bleach. The years had been bleak to old Rush, and the heart went harsh, but who could tell if it would continue? As he crunched on something, he raised his boot awake, squinting. Thick woven cotton, a few buttons, a face and a body, and a little clothed, knotted arms, and on the face a little smile, a child's doll, here in the ruins of a Russian industry. If that wasn't symbolic, he didn't know what was. Much has been lost, but much can be rebuilt. Ooh, nice. From the Oblast Nation. The political influence of Ninsi Novgorod is one of the largest cities in Western Russia, and thus the source of a significant portion of the National Assembly's deputies has continued to grow, and has, as well as the influence of the Ice Iron Governor Konstantin Katushev. His now extensive political infrastructure, and consequently, his ability to mobilize support for the SMR within the regions led to other parties being all but shut out of the Assembly delegation. Indeed, deputies from Katushev's domain now constitute a considerable portion of the entire Younger former Caucus, affecting the party's viewpoint as a whole. Recognizing this, the SMR has begun shifting more and more of its administrative organs, other, other than those acquiring sick cards itself, to the city. A corollary to the shift in both caucus demographics and organization is the rapidly increasing influence of Katushev within the party on the national level. He has reportedly been making suggestions on electoral and positional policy, and it's considered that unlikely that the other figures within the SMR's senior leadership will be unable to resist them. Among opposition party organizers, consensus has therefore been reached that Katushev could be considered a critical and irreplaceable figure within the SMR, and has been identified as a prime candidate for potential party leadership in the near future. The Iron Governor's influence grows. Also, uh, we'll do whatever we... Oh, that's actually not bad. So, you get... 5 times 6 3. You basically lose like 30, 35 political power for doing this, but you get all that stuff... And that's not bad. I w whatever we can do to get more war support, we'll do. So, because we definitely need war support. Party consensus, public sector investments. We got to rapidly start improving our poverty rate. Oh, yes, please. The public sector of any economy includes infrastructure, law enforcement, and health care. Public education, of course, and other important services. Through the sector, we, can, we handle the essential services that every citizen in Western Russia, the Western Russian Free Republic may use, provided they pay taxes, of course. Arguably, the public sector benefits everyone, and it is why we should put an emphasis on this part of the economy. Oh, absolutely. Three's not bad, not great. Oh, actually, we have enough now. Oh. Hospitals, we can definitely use more of that. Maybe that gives us extra stability. I do want more admin points, but it's alright. It doesn't, like, give us that much extra, so... It's nice to have, but it's not that much extra. Keep training if you need to. Uh, do we have any extra planes? Ooh, we have four... I don't want to see that. Yeah. Hey, almost won a political power day. Very nice, very nice. And now we'll just admin efficiency by a party consensus. If we're able to get our own party in order, or government in order, our control of our own party must be overriding priority. The DSMP is a hidebound institution, having inherited much of our factionalist divides from the old era, and even though our opponents are firmly out of office, we must ensure that secondary allegiances are wholly uprooted to keep the party vital. Dedication to the common interests in our party platform will be strictly enforced on the party members and le legislatures, with the dissent punished by expulsion. We'll also can develop grassroots organizations to keep our party members loyal, developing community ties with local leadership that will sustain our members' electoral campaigns. This support comes with inevitable compromises and even weaknesses to the influence of the party on important issues, but it's all necessary to keep their best interests aligned with their own. Otherwise, what would be the point of the party in the first place? The Red Star, while well, still a moderately fresh face in politics, the Western Repu Russian Western Russian Free Republic's Alexander Yakovlev has made himself known as a man of the left in the People's Democratic Socialist Party, a powerful political operative, known for his reformists and socialist tendencies. Yakovlev has gained a following among younger intellectuals, working class trade unionists, and citizens of the Front Territory, all of which have made him a powerful figure on the left wing of the party. While well, once a freshman deputy from Korol Yovo, he has since raised his status as a popular figurehead. Among socialists and other leftists within the DSMP, much to the chagrin of the party's right wing, with his fiery criticism of the right DSMP's liberal economic policies and a firebrand desire to uplift the working class of the nation through newfound humanistic socialism, many expect Yakovlev to seek the presidency. Although he has kept any hints of seeking the presidency to himself, uh, it remains to be seen if Yakovlev's coalition can overcome the party's establishment. An idealist is rare in Russia. 
the party consists of relentless progress. Huh. A doctrine of compromise. More liberal, increases liberal popularity. We probably don't want that. Honestly, yeah, why would we want that? So if you don't know about this one, please go right ahead, but... Lessons from the Reds. Uh, construction speed's not bad. More centralized. Party consensus for sale. Um, I do want to do, like, keep balancing between each other. Ooh, that's not bad. Our growth? Hatred surrounds. In a pub in Sictive Car, two seemingly unremarkable men sat at a table, drinks in hand, with undistinguished appearances and relatively plain clothes. One would never suspect that either was a prominent politician. Nevertheless, they were exactly that, being Leonid Kantaronovich and Yev Tsai Lieberman. Though they favored different factions, both men had remained friends over a decade, and now small differences in politics weren't about to change that now. They had little left besides each other, after all. A toast! Kantorovich declared joyously to the freedom of Russia and the salvation of the Jewish people. Looking around in alarm, the Lieberman let out a breath when he realized the pub was empty except for themselves and the staff. Careful, Leonard, he hissed. Much of what we work to heal Russia of its bigotry. Many remain who would hate us for who we are. The brainless goons of people like Shevarevich and Gumalev still want our heads to say nothing of the Reich and their jackbooted dogs. Hatred surrounds us, my friend, and it will take a long time for it to cool. A small sm uh, smile on his face, Kantorovich shook his head. That is precisely why we must celebrate. We have saved at least part of Russia from itself, and in doing so, it brought the hated Reich a step closer to its demise. If we do not celebrate who we are in a situation like this, we may as well be dead as, to, as so many of our people are. His brow furrowed and worried. Lieberman locked eyes with Kantorovich catching his attention. Maybe that's so, he admitted. His expression troubled. Even still, I need you to promise me one thing. Don't get yourself killed. More growth, private sector supp supplements. Our plan for total economic recovery starts with developing a private sector so that our people can actively run businesses and generate a profit. Right now, we need an economic system that can work for the individual citizens of our country. If the private sector plan succeeds, that we will have a stronger economic base that can transition smoothly into a social state we desire. The development towards socialism begins with a capitalist base, after all. Another comment included. Can you, uh, try or try Borman again and complete every focus? Oh, we can try to play Borman again. That sounds like fun. Borman is a very interesting man, but yeah, especially no step back. Someone says, if anyone knows somebody who are developed this mod, tell them to change the Democratic Comey flag when it unifies Russia to a modern-day Russian flag. Eh, maybe. Eh, I think it looks okay for now. So, someone says, God save the Tsar, guess a kingdom is better than a republic? Huh. Okay. Yeah, cool. Very, very nice. Ah, uh, party consensus, my friends. And then follow up with the relentless program. Yeah, I don't know why we'd want this one. Doctrine of compromise, but relentless program. Even though we lose a lot of stability, but that's okay. The political position of our party finds itself is already described by contemporaries as democratic hegemony, with the majority of the seats ensuring us practically full control of the legislative, providing providing we avoid internal strife and the party acts as a single bloc. This is to lead many of our representatives to doubt the usefulness of the democratic front and cooperation with rightists as a whole, seeing how there's no need for painful compromises when we can wrestle control of the legislative on our own. While this may be a controversial move to make, we might have to agree with some of these circles and start distancing ourselves from the other parties after all. The people of Russia haven't given the DSMP a vote of confidence for it had to be bogged down by uncooperative conservatives. Simulacal. Oh, yes, please. Open enterprise. Poverty rate begins slowly improve. BSD support base will oppose this. Whatever. A regulations against exploitation. Temporarily increases ruling party state populated by a small amount. Okay. An educated populace. Ooh, that'd be good to do as well. Uh, I do want just more economy, though. More economy. Stimulate local economies. That's a lot of growth. This economic plan requires the people to be the main source of income for the country. We can give jobs to our citizens by creating local building projects across the Republic. Boosting the smaller economies. Once we raise the national standard of living and disperse wealth throughout our social system, we'll be able to manifest under our guiding hand. Well, let's go in Jamaica. Very nice. Very nice. Minus 0.25% is not enough. Also, over uh, between the fade and fade out, we did get better admin efficiency. We're still going up, which is really nice. Functional administration is very good to have. Agriculture is looking like it's going to improve very soon. Even research facilities, maybe, too. Um, oh, credit rating. Look at that. A credit rating. Yay. It's not so garbage anymore. Now we're just mediocre. We're not poor. We're just mediocre. We're moving on up in the world. Beautiful. Hey, debt to GDP ratio we went down to 16.6%. Sign us up, baby. Um, anything else here? Widespread cronyism is still going up. So we might want to actually wait for academic base. No, actually, no. It's fine to do it now. Just because... Uh, Honestly, instead of uh, let's do this one first. Uh, we'll see. Uh, a populist agenda, social democracy, political power. Uh, a new republic? The old republic was broken down by its own best intentions. As social democracy was built, it absorbed the drugs of every ideology across the political spectrum. A paradox of tolerance was at work. Where at every opportunity we promoted the principles that we held so dear, and at every opportunity, radicals used their idealism to undermine our grip. Now, as the president consolidates his grip, we'll have an opportunity to truly express our beliefs in a purified form. A form where all will truly breathe free without inconvenient enemies and their alluring agitation politics. A form where the worst of Voznesensky's opponents, and without a doubt the Republic's enemies by extension, can be discredited once and for all. A new Republic, and a different Russia. Nice. 
Ah, yes. Fill the schools. Goals. Get an education. Ooh, 50% more factory output. Oh, yes, please. Because even though it looks good now, it's only just because we converted, like, a lot of divisions over, so. This will all be in the reds eventually. And in, in our red hands. Nice. Very nice. See, so if it's like this, six a month, yeah, he must have tried to max it out now, an educated populace. When a child is given a worldly, well-rounded education, their potential increases exponentially. So it is with the nations. Yes, Russia has traditionally been a land of uneducated peasants and workers, but it doesn't have to be so. Establishing new schools all across the nation must be a top priority. Every year that goes without goes by without a proper education system is another generation denied the future they deserve. If Russia is to have diplomats, scientists, engineers, and artists, the basic prerequisites for their existence must first be met. Standardize the schools, rapidly improve, it's nice. SPs, as well as research. Uh, so we'll probably save that one for later. We can do the ed other education one just to max it out, because primary schooling is nice and all, but going to here would definitely help us get more growth, which is absolutely critical to our uh, needs. Ooh, more free repair, civilian factories require more steel, more max factories, and faster construction speed in general for a lot of things here. 15.1% is very nice too, love it. We're really gonna focus on all of this stuff first, and then we'll focus more on like actual military stuff. Standardize the schools. We're gonna immediately jump to this one. The question of curriculum has always been too political. Every scheming dictator and obsessive ideologue wants children to learn nothing more than what they deem appropriate. This has been the downfall of every education system that caters to the masses and will not be repeated here. The fledgling Department of Education has begun to drop a standard curriculum under the president's oversight. The emphasis will be on the things most important for a modern nation: science and mathematics. All other fields will be under the jurisdiction of the autonomous republics and gov regional governments. This will demonstrate our trust in subordinate governments and allow for the safe continuation of minority cultures. Which we don't try to be racist against, but sometimes it just happens. You know, it just happens. Sometimes a little racism happens and, you know, we try not to do it, but it's a fun time. No, maybe not for the minorities, but anyways, anyways, we'll talk, we don't talk about that here. Ooh! Yes. That'd be good. And we're still at... Not bad. Could be better, though. Could be better. Nah, no, that's nice. Nascent industrial base. Well, getting up here definitely will help us out. And get more growth as well. Plus 3% more growth. Or, you know, modifier. That still looks really bad, though. Oh, boy. An educated populace. Standardize them schools. Nice. The race for the Urals. If you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Uh, oh, our future. Oh, prepare an invasion? No, because Oms will definitely invade them. Um, so we can do each one here. Let's see. More growth? Yes. Train military exercises, increase influence growth. Our military and professionals will begin to improve, which is nice. Agricultural subsidies. Local businesses, that's fine. So if I use relief. Uh, some oil, because we'll take that when we ever do that, so. Nice. When the box was open, Katharina nearly cried. She cried many times in the schoolhouse, alone after long days with the many orphaned children of the town. This time was different. She was surrounded by her wards, and these were tears of joy. When the German bombs destroyed the last history book, she feared the worst. Never would, never would the children know of Nuruk and his sons, or Alexander Nevsky of his victory over the Teutonic Catholics. It wasn't simply the destruction of a book. It was the obliteration of their history. Then a man from the government came. He was short, balding, and had no smile. A perfect bureaucrat and a boring human being, yet Katerina. Well, she picked up that tiny man and kissed him on the spot for what he brought, for the news he brought. New books, not just reprints, badly copied ones at that, but actually new books with the latest in historical eff efforts. And not only for the history, which had been lost in the bombing, but chemistry, math, biology, and humanities. Come, children, come, Katarina said, clapping her hands together. Before we start our math lesson, let's read about a great and mighty queen, but mother of Rurik's grandchild, Olga of Kiev. She tapped the edge of the book, drumming up their innocent and, uh, and avid excitement before reading. Later in the day, she would bore with them with numbers and talking about amoebas, which would help them in the future. But the past had been kept alive, which what Russia once had been kept alive. The taxes weren't simply going to bombs or bullets of bread, but making sure they had a future for the first time since she was born. Katharina knew what it felt like to have hope for the future, and she could dream that the children had a chance to never know a world without. Nice. Workers. Because we want to do that, that agriculture one as well, because that helps with poverty too. Um, weekly stability is not bad. I get more war support as well. That's the one we definitely have to do. Nice. And then, past the scandals of urban rural reform. Oh, we're going to. Oh, hey! Even though we just clicked on it, that sucks, but whatever. We're going to about better agricultural methods. Please go ahead. This is usually one that we get done anyways, usually. So, populist agenda. Let's do that one first. Not so long ago, in the disunited lands of Russia, populism was employed by many a warlord to justify the rule. As such, some viewed it as a natural tool of the cruel age, invented by despots to bamboozle their subjects. 
However, weak in the halls of power clearly see the benefits of populism, promising a better future to the people, fostering unity between them and the government, and securing the trust and her mandate are all beneficial to a democracy as much as any would-be dictator. Let us cultivate healthy populism in our party program, ensuring popular support in our march to progress. Welfare, poverty relief, higher important instructors, and poor heavy machinery as well. So now you're back down all the way to what? 1.27, that sucks. Uh, if there's anything we have to look out for, it would might be industrial equipment, maybe. Even though that's not bad. Industrial expertise is doing really well. Primary schooling is doing really flipping well now, too. And then we'll do open to enterprise. One method we can use to spark our economies is inviting foreign enterprises into our country and permitting them to build factories. These factories will generate a profit for us and a profit for our network of partner companies. All I have to do is reach out to some of these large businesses and convince them to bring their manufacturing plants to Russia. Oh, wow. It's spiking. Because we spend a lot of money. That's why. It's fine. We only get one a day, which sucks, but whatever. 26 divisions. Not bad. Keep, keep training. Keep training. Minus 0.29. Nice. Wow. Monthly rate of 15. Holy bad words. 15. That's kind of insane. And research facilities so go up by 5 a month. So by the time we're done, we'll get the next one done. Good. 10 a month is really good. Expertise is going to go up next. Even equipment. We would definitely want to wait for equipment, maybe. Maybe. Expand the power grid would not be bad either. A populist agenda, my friends. Open enterprise, though. Our interest rates will decrease by 0.8%. That's really nice. Increase the export focus. That's fine. Open to enterprise. Interest rates, huh? Interest rates, interest rates. Yeah, it's not great right now, but still bad. Not bad. Um, yeah, you might as well wait for this one. Just because it gives us another month. And a, eh, mm, there's nothing else we can really do there. I'll still have it. In fact, I'll screw it anyways. I don't care. I don't, I don't want to wait. I hate waiting sometimes. I can be very patient sometimes, I guess. It's all right. Oh, here we go. Relief. Give him some relief. It's fine. Um, admin strain. Rioter is majoritarian. Less popular with large minority populations. Uh, if you're worried about this one, please go right ahead. I'm going to do the other one. The All-Russian Autonomy Commission. The territory of Russia and the historical process of her expansion has absorbed the lands of many ethnicities, their population varying from millions of mere hundreds, each with a culture unlike the others. Since the days of the October Revolution, Lenin's government, believing the principles of self-determination, granted the peoples of the new Soviet Union significant autonomy, the legacy of which we still carry, our republic itself having emerged from the Komi ASSR. With our authority now extending throughout all of Western Russia, the autonomy, autonomy question, as it is come to known as, has become a sig more significant issue, with notable figures from various ethnicities dissatisfied with the current status quo. While outright secessionists are few and irrelevant, we could satisfy the wishes of moderate particular circles by introducing a separate body to improve the status of minorities and serve as an intermediary between the central government and the autonomies in, which, in matters where the direct control is unnecessary. While some criticize this as soft separatism and subversion of ethnic equality, many agree that this is the only way to guard the many ethnicities of Russia from the tyranny of the majority. Oh, I can't improve that. That sucks. Alright, so let's go back to guns and anti-tank stuff. Expand the power grid. You get more weekly stability. A lot of stability. And more energy. Why not? Let's do it. Why not? Um, regulations against exploitation. Lessons from the Reds. Russian Republican Army. Ooh, that's actually not terrible, too. Well, let's go ahead and do extend social warfare, because we did two of these once. So. One of the key elements of any socialist agenda, uh, ours was not being an exception, is a promise of welfare for the citizens of the state. Many fought for us on the fields of battle and gave their vote to ensure that this better tomorrow for the children. And as due time, we honored the promise. With the initial stage of long-awaited reunification complete, we've achieved precious peace, allowing us to turn the necessary attention inwards to finally build a working system of social welfare for all. Nice. Better planes, yes please. We, By God, do we need better planes. My goodness, do we need better planes. Almost 50 army XP is pretty decent too. Alright, extend social welfare. Generous subsidies. Lessons from the Reds. So our economic advisors believe that Lenin, that Lenin, was once going in the right direction when he issued the Soviet Union's new economic policy in the 20s. The Bukharinists share the same ideas regarding a private sector-based development that have been a strong state-driven economy. Today in West Russian Republic, we have decided to try the capitalist turning into socialist economic strategy and see how well it works. It can be that the Reds were correct in which policies work best for Russia. Ooh, advanced development subsidies, yeah. 
That'll be good to do. We need more political power, though. Only 1.23 every day? Minus 0.4 is not enough. Nice. I love this so much. Yeah, I could use more expertise. Uh, 12, whatever. You would get a better effect if we just waited, but I don't want to wait. I'm impatient. I'm. Oh. Oil. I saw oil. And we want oil. That's local businesses. Oil. And oil. Nice. It is 68, so about July we'll probably start. Wow, they have a lot of motorized. Why do they have so many motorized? Converter divisions. Actually, for a single motorized division, they're probably just like. It's just the AI that cheats sometimes. It's just really unfair. But. They have infantry on them. Omsk condemns us. Refugees fleeing from the vengeance of Cess lands administered by Omsk have notified us of internal propaganda being distributed in their territory. Apparently, a little more than rapacious warlords here to profit out of the dark age of Russia, yet simultaneously we're native idealists who are capable of making the hard choices needed to ensure Russia's survival in the great, face of the Great Trial. Regardless of the internal inconsistencies, this marks a notable moment in our relations with the Black League, and it seems war will be on our frontiers before long. The League was never going to leave us alone. Regulations against exploitation. When the general public is given power, it is our responsibility to ensure everyone's safe. Ever since we created the private sector, many privately owned businesses have spawned with each with their own unique treatment of the workers. More often than not, these businesses abuse the workers for their own personal gain, and it is time we put a stop to this cruelty. We must create nationwide safety regulations to ensure that our workers are not exploited, and any private business that fails to adopt these regulations will be punished severely and pass the scandals. Though the DSMP is a guarantee of prosperity in the Republic and the party that unified Western Russia under the banner of democracy, it's eventually become evident that the pedestal pop support it's so used to enjoying is quite brittle. With every major scandal is minor as a single bribe. Oh, well, whatever. The public perception of our apparatus shifts from praise to condemnation, and many say that since its ascension to power, the party has been permeated with crooked bureaucrats and thieving executives. Well, over the years, these scandals have become the new normal as public opinion eventually stabilizes after each one, and any outrage so far has been relatively minor. Eventually, any of them might spiral out of control in an ensuing political crisis, may cost our party its ruling place or even the permanent stability of the republic. To prevent such a disaster. We should improve our public image, which will ultimately secure a genuine pop support we so desperately require. The recent reunification should serve well to be presented as a moment when the DSMP was born, reborn from a den of corruption that has abandoned its founding principles. Now it's become true the Democratic Association is struggling for popular welfare that is built on the principles of honesty and open government. As such, initiatives have been approved for a local anti corruption campaign, showing the electorate that the party acknowledges its problems and is ready to fight them openly. Whether this will prove effective is another question entirely, though this will be the first step on the way to overcoming the distrust many feel towards the DSNP. A matter of framing, secret speech to party delegates, Comey District, redacted by order of state security, a British version, and so it is, comrades, that we must purge ourselves of the rotting smell that has followed us all these years. I will admit that as your general secretary, I've been complicit in many things. If old Natalia from the barbershop knew what I'd done to keep the party in order, well, perhaps I would not have made it in the last elections, but the weapons of the past must be set aside if we were to build our peace for the future. Yes, I'm speaking of payment. The network of uh, donations must stop all at once. We will repent of illegal campaigns findings, financing and donate existing liquid assets to charitable causes. Well, that is how we will present in truth. This is little more than a wiping of your own butt after we've already flushed, yes? Quiet down, friends. You have heard my humor for a decade. Should you now now stop stoop to pretending that I'm actually funny? In any case, the payments must stop and the robe that those payments bought must be shared with their loss. No more flaunting comrades, expensive cars, wrist watches, all must go back into the bag. We are to maintain decorum for a little while, and we must humble ourselves to walk in with the common man. Unless one of you wants to lose his job, yes, you in the back? Oh, the salaries? You mean like the Satan, satin deliveries you were boasting off at breakfast? Yes, we will all undergo mandatory salary cuts, and we will bow, and we will scrape, and we will gain something better than money. Friends, it is better to be secure in power than it is in finance. If we get this right, we could be secure for a hundred years. Here in those profitable backwater in Russia. Good trade, don't you think? What a fine address. Now off to the party. No, basically making it no money, but Omsk did go to war with those guys, and we we're just kind of, well, we'll go to war with them too. Omsk gets off. Attempted officer coup in Thailand, that's fine, whatever. Uh, you guys up out of here. They're so struggling, so. You know what? As you can tell, I, I had an emergency cover all these guys over too, so we'll see what happens. But, a lot of lag. You know what? Screw it. Force the attack. Kill off Omsk if you possibly can. An urban role platform. Democracy in Russia is like navigating a tightrope. One is perpetually forced to navigate between the two worlds, each with vastly different requirements and lived experiences. Just as Giannis was two-faced, so too must we adopt a two-faced approach to look to the world of the village and the world of urbanite and balance both their needs. Thankfully, Vosnesinski's long experience in government has given him an intuitive grasp on these two chambers of the heart of Russia. We'll adopt a mixed approach, pushing for the gradual integration of the economy through separate but equal development. The farmer shall be given an equal voice and support for his labor and an equal platform of the labor at his factory, and we shall push for the organization of a true labor farmer or farmer labor working class that can stand as one desperate, despite their asymmetrical backgrounds. Only when the two chambers of the Russian heart will beat as one shall Russia be unified in a free electoral commission. 
The Electoral Commission were a controversial introduction, introduction to the Old Republic. As repeated efforts to suborn the legitimacy of these commissions by associated extremist fringes made the election, every election a headache. That said, our elections are still in desperate need of neutral third-party observation to ensure that said extremist fringes never again regain a hold in our electoral scene. We'll introduce a new commission to solve these problems, one whose neutrality will be firmly guided by the president and the head of the legislature to keep the powers of the state in check. There are some who claim that the Electoral Commission is in fact simply one more tool in our president's pocket, and that there are in fact widespread claims that the commission is, is as steeped in money as its predecessor. These extremist calls will be disregarded as the truth as claims they are. Truth is, we are the instrument of the people's will. Those who disagree are more than welcome to take it up with us in person. Come on, guys. Don't lose. I know it's Omsk, but this is going way, way, way better than Vyatka. I don't understand why Vyatka is just so OP, man. I really don't. Not, at this point, I don't, I don't want to understand. I don't want to understand. Lost 37,000, even though we lost quite a few to these guys, but whatever. It's nice having puppets, too. Grind down arms if you can. They got a lot of manpower. Only six factories, though, which is nice. Then his body captured. You're going to be with your head. Four tickets of history now in our hands. Stand for democracy. There are certain ideals for which we cannot afford a compromise. Chief among them would be our often quoted support for the true democratic ideals. This is what separates us from the radical rabble to our left and right, our absolute unyielding conviction that the people alone can decide their mandate, and that no group of stuff suits should decide the course of the nation alone. As such, we must develop a new mandate, a compact with the people that will appeal to the men and women of Russia. Their alienation must not be allowed to fester, lest it consume the body politic and the sickness of extremism. Healthy level propagandization about just how committed we are, accompanied by quiet suppression of the remnants of the old extremist group, will keep our citizens on the straight and narrow, and rhetorical focus on progressive legislation will convince them that we are the best side. A care and sick approach might not be particularly sophisticated, but that is the beauty of politics, yes? No? Yes. And we'll integrate them later on. I want to integrate them after we're done with this war, so... Uh, Y'all can stop that. No, you... Oh, you blunderheads. Why? You were going to war, and then... <sighs> this mod, man. Hoy 4. It's not even this mod. It's just Hoy 4. Stupid Hoy 4 things. Get get to the line where you have to go. Stupid idiots. But if you're about better research facilities, please go ahead. We'll get back to the school eventually. Nice. Not bad. We could raise war taxes, but we're not going to. Great conspiracy. Very cool. Give us time to plan and whatnot. Really destroy the divisions. Because the divisions are not bad. Definitely weaken than Vyaka for some God, I don't need some Help him out, help him out. A monstrous regiment of electors. Gorlokov nodded at the men gathered around him, while his face nodded, but his mind in truth was far away. He even agreed to the darn meeting. So, why the president authorized a mandatory getaway from his duties in the army to attend him? Presently, a staff dressed in formal slacks, put on a painfully plastic smile, and clapped for attention. Gentlemen, I welcome you to the first meeting of the Republic Electoral Committee. Please, let us go around the table and say a little about where we come from and what we do. As Gorlokov listened, his face grew ever more set, and his heart chilled. He'd learned from his from young to tell when someone was speaking about something they didn't believe. Their eyes never met yours, or their words were oddly stilted or li til lilting. Something about the human voice is a consume consummate betrayal betrayer of intent. Every one of the members of the table had a voice betrayed him. Their gazes were false, and when they spoke of the enthusiasm they shared for the electoral commission, the red flags be and began to appear before Korolov's own mental gaze. Korolkov kept his voice level as he rose to speak, but in a sudden tide of conviction, he decided to probe a little. Gentlemen, I believe that we only have a breach of the surface, as it were. I wish to hear more about why the Vosnesensky chose you, for our common will must be built through our understanding of individual purposes. What can we bring to democracy, and how can we bring it about? The men looked to him, then around him, and then began to laugh. One slapped the table, chuckling as he got the words out. Oh, Korolkov, you're funny. You're right. Let's admit it, folks. The man gestured expansively to a nodding audience. We were picked because we stand a game from it all. We don't need to pretend at fairness, and we won't. Democracy is when Volznesinski wants things done, right? The man leaned close, almost predatory in a sudden smile, and the, man, and the more he wants done, the more democratic his elections will be. Excuse me, am I in the wrong room? I don't know, plan? Yes. When the Russian worker state was first established in 1921, the Soviets developed a gospel plan high under the central economic planning of the young nation. The agency would maintain the Soviet economy until the unions collapsed in the face of the Nazi, Nazi Germans. We must develop our own gospel plan ask agency to grow the young republic in economy. It must have the authority to coordinate both the state industrial developments and our public works projects. Nice. Jet engines, nice. We tried again, but I doubt it'll go really that well, but we'll see. And you're going to force the attack. You'll do really well here, but then you get to here too. 
Hey, we've learned about improved academic base, please go ahead. We have a lot of energy compared to everything else. Nice. We're gonna lose a lot of guys, but that's okay. We've already lost a lot of guys, but still. But still. Die. Might be enough to actually capitulate them, but democratic idealism. Just as the poets fled at Tom, so due to the tired and huddled masses to the old republic, despite all that has happened here, we obtain that essential spark of de democratic energy, that infallible belief that our voice matters. That's what the old republic get going. Even as its institutions fell apart around us and the stresses of extremism dragged it into the muck. And this is it is this idealism that will empower us to build a new dream stronger and better than the old one. A push for unionism, continued efforts to weed out irregularities in our voting system and the expansion of our voting system to ensure all walks of life have an equal sane elections, we're riding in a lot of passion for democracy, and our love shall spill into the streets of our shared home. Many Russia, may Russia live and breathe free, for as long as we draw breath, we should never cease in pulling her towards the public good. Nice, these guys are cut off, which is actually really good. You guys are going to keep going, though. Keep doing well. Keep getting that army XP. Yes, please. Oh, and there goes Scotland. Destined to die. Oh, we actually lost a division. Look at that. Good job, England. Good job, I guess. Seriously, come on, man. They are in the literal mud. The marsh. And yet they have more than enough supplies? I kind of doubt it, son. I really doubt it. Surrounded and no supplies. Hmm. Sure. i uh, just take Tomsk or Omsk. Seriously, bro? The militia can hold out against us, huh? That's that's totally fair. I know we're fighting over... Oh, we're not even fighting over a river. They have a fort there, but still. Um, after that, we'll probably... Ooh, campaign. Rest of the workers. Uh, Spound key facilities? Yeah. Our large industrial facilities are precious to us. We have to provide all the manufacturing necessary to keep our economy running and our systems working. We must work on expanding the large facilities we currently have, especially in the industry of Hesk and Gorky. With improved factories and more jobs for our workers, our economy will certainly be strengthened. Good thing they're dead. We'll integrate them later. I want to invest in all these places first, though. Increase state GDP and get more oil. Well, that's, just, that's really nice, then. It's going to quarrel. This place is going to hurt us quite badly right now, but that's okay. Put him there. You guys are really well. Let's go back to militia then. Because these guys should just ally us anyways, but we'll see. Yeah, like I said earlier, these guys are still trying to figure out what's going on, so. Gotta love it. Nice. Night vision? Nice. Very good. Oh, I guess some of these guys too. Not bad. More money every every year. Nice. Ooh. That's what helps us tax people. Oh yes, and more gives us more stability. Good. Oh, we lost some production units. That sucks. Minus point three seven. Less than sixty percent poverty. I'd say that's pretty decent. I don't know about you, but that's pretty decent overall. An elementary lesson. The class bows as Miss Komarova walked into the room. There is a silence that accompanies her. One born of painful experience. The teacher. I've never believed in sparing the rod, but today, her face is a little softer than usual. A little less set in its cast, and as she gestures for the class to sit, her mind seems far away. Uh, Komarova begins to write on the whiteboard three words, Democracy, Socialism, Russia. Can anyone tell me what democracy is? Komarova's voice is stern and gentle in a fashion only a seasoned educators can pull off. For once, the class does not silent before her gaze on boy Pavlovich. With the curly hair raises his hand tentatively, she nods to him, yes, Pavlovich. Democ democracy is when, when the people choose what they want to happen, like when mom and dad choose between me and my brother to help at the shop. Komarova nods approvingly. That's why, right, Pavlovich. Very good. Democracy is when we choose the important things, not just who does the weekly chores, but also our leaders and what we dream about for our country or our futures. And socialism is when the government does things. A voice rings from the back of the class, jubilant in its confidence. Donna, my father says Shevarovich is right, and that's a... Your father's wrong, Donna. Socialism is a lot like... When we divide apples at lunch, we give extra to those who might have less to eat, and when people can give extra slices from their own share, we distribute those too because it's fair. Komarova smiles wanely. We must get it right, children, but remember that these things when you come of age, and be wise in your choices because this is who we're doing for. She wraps the last word on the board of Russia. This is where we belong and her dreams with us. A generation of engineers. Russia has been destroyed by countless years of bowers and bombings. To rebuild it, we will need more engineers than ever before. Civil engineers from all across the nation must be called to serve new, large projects of building bridges, railways, and roads. Seats must be improved to support the health of the people and ensure services are met. Unfortunately, the current amount of engineers just won't cut it. 
If we want more engineers, we must teach more engineers. Universities will be persuaded to hold even more classes in civil engineering as well as helping bring additional people into the field. Soon Russian cities will look even better than they did before all the bombings. Yay. Hopefully. I suppose that is a hope and goal of all that, so. Maybe we want to save just slightly more money. I'm not going to save a bunch, but there's that. Artillery's looking really good now. I think we actually might cut back on artillery just a little bit. Because I do want to get a lot of helicopters. And fighters, too. So we have these early helicopters. Um, do we have any... Oh, attack heli's nice. Let's go three. Let's go three. Even anti-air will be nice as well. Let's go down to five. Go down to three for now, honestly. Yeah, that'll be good enough for now, too. Span key facilities. A generation of engineers. Campaign for the disadvantaged. Despite a recent general welfare ca campaign, many of our citizens remain in a powerless and downtrodden state, experiencing difficulties with integration in this republic's social and political environment. The reunification, though it brought democracy to the people of Russia, has robbed, has, it robbed many of their old ways of life, leaving them stranded on the border between collecting values and realities of their new life. Such people, when not shooter from uncalled hardships, often turn to more radical op options, aiming to tear down the society they view as downtrodden. As such, before the disadvantaged turn into radicals and terrorists, we must lend them a helping hand in integration. Nice. Nice. Let's finish all these up and then we'll integrate everybody at the same time. Receptiveness is 90%, which is pretty good. Oh, we could do Russian reunification already, but we're not. That would change our tree immediately, and I don't want to change our tree yet. Our tree is already pretty good. Nice. Integrate. Integrate. We'll see. Hopefully they say yes. We'll try infrastructure for now. Anything else there? Generation of engineers, yes. And then a shining precedent. Precedent. Vox populi, vox die. Russian reunification, we can wait. Oh, uh, through the years, though the for though for years our rivals and critics argue that a functional democracy cannot exist within the brutal realities of warlords and banditry that plagued Russia since her defeat, our new republic has disproven this claim by the fact of its very existence. It was still the onslaught of radicals within and without, right and left, and has carried the torch of popular freedom from the Volga to the White Sea, breaking the expectations of the cynical, its triumph in war as well as peace, fighting for progress across both the fields of battle and the halls of government. Our efforts here have established a precedent that will outlast any tyranny for in the hearts and minds of the people. Our republic shall persist through the cr hardest of crises. Three hurrahs for Russia, three hurrahs for democracy. Nice. And we still have a, seven f a fat 7% war sport. Nice. Agriculture, probably just because I want to improve poverty as fast as possible. We're not going to have enough, enough for the next poverty one, but whatever. Uh, worker training, I would like that as well, but poverty. Poverty, 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 poverty. 1.2 is not enough. Ah, screw it. Screw poverty. Improve worker training? Yeah, why not? We're going to get them all done anyways. Hey, credit rating improved again. Awesome. Hey, we're fair. I wish we could go to acceptable. But hey, better debt ceiling. Less interest rates. More growth. 3.7 billion in yearly surplus. It's not to love. 31 divisions, even though they're not very good. Even though this guy's really talented. Hey, the only except integration? Great. If you want to build up, please go ahead. As well as Ornberg, yay! We got all these divisions too. Um, honestly, we don't need all these divisions. So actually, send half you guys to the Gulag. Well, not really the Gulag, but you know what I mean. Bata? Oh, not Bata, but Banov. Nice. Precedent. Take research, very good. Allocation, education, nice. Um, integrate probably. Oh well, we can't really integrate them now. I mean, they're already gone. Do we just core them immediately? Oh, we don't have to. Oh, we don't have to spend political power for that either. We just core it immediately. Oh, that's so nice. Okay, welfare, and then returning expatriates would be good. nice next. So this tree is done. Rights for the workers, public worker boom. Yes. Our careful policies have transformed a weakened economy and a quickly developing one, with a strong base for additional improvement. It is safe to say that our economy is now one of Russia's finest, and is all thanks to our public spending and infrastructure building. We must remember to thank our patriotic workers who have allowed us to establish this great social society, and through our their craft that we were able to live prosperous lives in the West Russian Republic. Oh, yes, please. Oh, dead GP ratio. Keep going down. Keep going down, son. 
basic jet fighters. Very nice. Uh, got some early gas. It's not bad. I like that a lot. Train if you can. Vox Pulpily, Vox Die. Interceptors, fighters. Not bad. The president eyed his opponents in much the same way that one would expect to eye a stray dog on the other side of the road. At a remove, but not quite removed enough for disdain to wear off. The unionist grimaced at his glance, but otherwise did nothing. It wasn't like he could do anything about the man with the popular mandate after all. Now Vazdesinski approached the topic of contention again, almost patient, like a schoolmaster, feigning concern. Alexia, I believe we have certain concerns your union has failed to address. So let's try again. Will you or will you not stand for a work week reduction? The unionist sighed, trotting out the same words he'd always trotted out to the foe benevolent. With all due respect, Mr. President, you don't simply don't understand the material conditions here. We're already trading on the ragged edges of employers. It will not do to anger. Did I read this one already? Yeah. <clears throat> All at once, Valzesinski animated, almost snarling. Alexei reeled at the sight, and there it is. How dare you comport yourself like a union man while you bow and scrape before your employers? What a travesty of the spirit of unionism, an insult to the ideals of our nation. Was it just him, or was it a glimpse of Trump in the president's eyes? Was this a sport him? As the man gathered around him, clapped and jeered, Alexei covered his face with his hands. He lost the union's heart, and he, who knew if his successor would resist, crumbling before the demands of the people, or the company would, wouldn't expel them from the factory altogether. Well, Zenzelski, shaking his hands, leaned in and whispered as if, as if delivering a final blow. Nothing personal, just the people's will and the National Resource Directorate. Here in the Free Republic, we have an abundance of different natural resources, but we cannot afford to use up all of them carelessly. We must develop an agency, the National Resource Directorate, to keep track of our natural resource supply and monitor its use. We can ensure that the resources will only be used in rich estate, and if they cannot be used, they will be carefully preserved. Ooh, say GDP growth factor? Yes, please. Nice, minus 0.41, so good. You know that the professionals will going to improve this very soon? Yeah, Omsk was very easy to beat compared to uh, sometimes how they normally are. And extremely easy compared to Vyatka. My one of my worst nemesis nemeses. Hmm. MC selected, and look at all this up. We're we're maxed out now. Now I've been told roads are pretty pretty worthless at this point, and they kind of are. But I always build them up to say like we're gonna build up roads. You might run out, we might run out of things to build here. And it does give us more, more resources, which we can use to sell for more production units. So it's not completely worthless, but it, they're definitely removed from the high priority on the list. You know, ever since No Step Back came out. Happy 1969, everybody. Hope you're having a great, great, great year. We still have a half the focus you to do. We'll do a chunk of that out in the next episode, which actually the next episode might be the last. I don't really feel like going and taking out Germany again. I mean, it, it's at this point, we're not going to. Oh, well, whatever. But yeah, I don't, want, I don't want to use a second West Western War mod to take out Germany. It's just not... I don't feel like it. This campaign's been enough, hard enough. And doing that is going to make me tear my hair out even more, which my hair might be thinning. We'll see. Rest of the workers. We've seen throughout history the oppression that every day workers face, from ancient Egypt to the Middle Age style serfdom to the grueling Industrial Revolution. Common workers were just tools that were exploited by the middle and high classes. The Western Russian Free Republic has no need for this type of ruthless exploitation. Workers' rights were an essential part of the DSMP's campaign, and they remain our highest priority when we develop and enforce our policies. We put the workers above everyone else, as they are the collective atlas that holds Earth in place, the aftermath. Many in Orenburg were not too knowledgeable on who Nikolai Alex Alexievich von Znesensky was, nor any of his several flaws. However, what was known that he had led a democracy with social aspirations, and this mollified some of the people at first. Then von Znesensky's personality and his scandals made their way into the limelight. Tabloids, radio talk shows, and the word of mouth spread like wildfires. Orenburg was brought into the fold and to the surprise of no one. Divided the people, however, despite the arguments for and against him, the general reaction seemed to be largely muted, indeed. Despite the occasional group of workers or farmers vo voicing mild complaints, for the most part they were content with how he was running things. Barba didn't seem too aggravated by him, nor did he seem to be too much for him. If anything, the main reaction of this new holder of the girls was apathy. Apathy, of course, is preferable to revolt. Result, nice. It's getting that one done, which is good. I don't really care about any of this stuff here. Makes it for uh, artillery. Artillery is really good to get, but still. So, yes, and yes, and yes. Attack helis, basic helicopters. Very good, very good. Heavy machinery would be good to do next as well. Only 1.19 every single month. God dang it, not enough. Right, so the workers, and we don't have the economy tree. Yay! Onto the world stage. Open the gates. Well, that's not bad. Interest rates go down. Better military professionals. If you like it, but that, please go right ahead. Excellente. But I think we'll conclude with maybe the Russian Republican Army. Our brave men in the field have accomplished a lot for us, yes, but we need to start bringing the Russian Republican Army to contemporary standards. The Germans, Japanese, and Americans of all top-notch militaries. And it's likely to do the advanced tactics and modern weapons, neither of which we currently have. 
In order to restore Russian prestige, we must work to modernize the army and rejoin the ranks of the global superpowers in terms of military might and onto the world stage. Now that we've become a regional superpower, it's time we start reaching out to nations beyond Russia to achieve this. We need to establish a proper foreign ministry and hire diplomats that can fully express their intentions to the world. Since we have become a contender for unifying Russia, the world has taken notice of our republic, and we need to make our first appearance on this world stage. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we'll probably try to unify the rest of Russia. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.